Hello guys, welcome to our weekly IPL review powered by SSE. What is SSE? SSE stands for Sports Stock Exchange and they are a unique fantasy sports platform that is going to resonate with all of you. They make fantasy sports more real and fair through the game-changing features like live match trading. Yes, you heard that right. You can actually change your team during a match. And secondly, match situation index that rates a player's performance with respect to the difficulty of the situation they're performing in which makes it so much more fun to play on their platform compared to the many others out there of course over the course of the ipl we'll be working with them on some data and insights to better understand some key player performances and we hope to eventually use them to bring a better product to you so sit back and enjoy this video with former england cricketer monty panissa and guerrilla cricket commentator Nakul Pandey. Hello guys and welcome to our weekend IPL review. This is powered by SSC, so please go check their website out and their app as well. I'm joined by former England international cricketer Monty Panissa and fresh off his guerrilla cricket commentary for the KKR game right now, Nakul Pandey. So we'll start with the KKR game because it's just finished as we record this. What did you all think of the game and were KKR deserved winners in your opinion? I'll start with you, Monte. Well, yeah, I think I think the way uh, Owen Morgan uh, captained the team, um, especially, you know, during that sort of, you know, 10 to 15 overs was probably, you know, where I think uh, KKR won the game. Um, and the way he, um, you know, I think uh, KKR have got sort of bowlers of, you know, high arm release, which... Uh, I think on, on on Indian conditions make it um, difficult to to get away and you know Pat Cummins again they you know uh, producing you know match delivering you know balls which you know when once he got Johnny Bairstow out well, I thought that was pretty much uh, you know the turning point of the match. Yeah, Nakul, I wanted to ask you, of course, we'll come to the game in detail in a bit, but Harbhajan Singh played, which I had said in my preview, and you, uh, I want to hear from you more about Harbhajan and why he only bowled one over. A lot of uh, KKR fans actually have been uh, messaging me saying, why do you think he bowled only one over? So what would you like to say to them? Because his first over wasn't bad. I mean, that, that's a role that I've seen Mo and Ali do for England a couple of times, where he only bowls that first over. Uh, and then um, it does allow you flexibility later in the in the innings because that's an extra over that someone else doesn't have to bowl. Maybe he could have bowled another in the power play, but he's become almost a power play specialist in the last few years. It, it is also worth pointing out, this is for his first game of professional cricket in two years, uh, Harbhajan Singh. He didn't play last year's IPL because of family concerns around the UAE bubble um, and hasn't played a domestic game for in, in state cricket for a long time. I don't, he doesn't play for Punjab anymore. Um, so there's a certain amount of easing him back in. Um, and, he, and he did the job well. Um, I thought, you know, eight off the first over is fine. Um, you know, didn't, didn't bowl badly at all. I think over, over time, he'll be used a little bit more, maybe used a bit more in the, uh, maybe all two or three, even in the power play if he bowls a well. But I didn't think there was, it was too much of an issue um, with, with that. And uh, there, were, there was a clear sense of, of what KKR were trying to do. They were going to use... Uh, going to bowl Cummins out um, before the uh, really before the death over is only having one bowling one death uh, over. Use Pat Cummins a lot in the uh, sorry uh, um, Andre Russell a lot in the death. Varun Chakravarti I thought bowling in the middle overs was uh, was excellent. Would have been tempting to use him in the power play as well, but I thought he bowled really well in the uh, in the in the middle overs. Uh, and uh, I think Prashid Krishna again bowling out. You know very clear. You know bowling he's probably your fastest bowler alongside Russell but not using him at the death where he's been expensive bowling him two in the power play a couple in the middle and uh, all of KKR's bowlers worked out really well uh, all of the changes worked out really well for them at every at every stage and um in the end it's just that total that KKR put up was probably a little bit over par on this pitch um which wasn't s I don't think it was as slow as people were saying but it was it, you know, it wasn't, it's not, it's, it's Chennai, it's not the one today, it's not lightning quick. It was reasonably even pace and you could hit through the line of the ball, but um, I think the, the work of, um, the work that KKR had done at the top of the innings and then finished off by Dinesh Karthik, probably the Sunrisers um, will think that they conceded maybe 10, 15 too many. And, and in the end, certainly once Besto got out, um, got, uh, had too much to do. Uh, yeah, Monty, I was watching the post-match presentation and uh, Owen Morgan said that Harbhajan's experience was key when the other bowlers were bowling. He said that even though Harbhajan didn't bowl more than one over, he was talking constantly to Varun Chakravarti, Prasid Krishna, Pat Cummins. 
when they were bowling and telling them how to go about their bowling strategy, especially because he's played at Chennai for the Chennai Super Kings, so he knew the pitch well. So as a bowler yourself, when you've got that experience in your side, how important is it to have them in your ear telling you what you can do? Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm a big believer of, uh, you know, players with experience uh, are, are vital, you know, in, in the makeup of a team and, and especially during pressured situations or situations where you need to keep, you know, putting, the, putting your foot, sort of keep putting, let's say, the pressure on the team. Um, you know, I think, you know, yeah, Harpajan Singh is a vital sort of, you know, part of that team, you know, uh, in various ways. You know, he can, he can bowl well, he can provide um, valuable, you know, insight um, to, you know, Owen Morgan, how to, you know, marshal it, the, the troops and, and, and the younger spinners, you know, as well. So I think, yeah, he's going to, you know, I, I can see him being a regular feature. Um, you know, part of the KK team because of his experience and, and he knows. He knows how to, you know, win games. Um, he's won a few trophies with Mumbai Indians and Chennai Super Kings and I'm sure he'll be uh, hoping that he can um, get, you know, Kolkata Knight Riders into the playoffs with, with his experience. You know, he's, he's played over 10 years in the IPL so he'll be hoping that that's a, a valuable asset to the team. Yeah, and I'll come to KKR's batting first. They started off strong. Gil, they lost his wicket early, but Nitish Rana and Rahul Tripathi, two young players in the IPL, doing it for KKR. Rana's now got four fifties in his last six innings as an opener for KKR. So, is that a good sign for KKR? Because that means that if those top three Indian players can do well, that relieves the pressure of that middle order going towards the end and makes them more flexible with Shakib, uh, Shakib playing or in Morgan playing, Dinesh Karthik and Andre Russell, those four can just rotate between them depending on the situation. So, how impressed were you guys with Nitish Rana and Rahul Tripathi's application at the start? I mean, it's not the first time that we've seen the, the power from these guys. Um, I, certainly, when you're putting up nearly 190 on a pitch that isn't that quick, and Andre Russell and Owen Morgan score seven runs between them, you know, that's got to be, that's a, that's a great sign of encouragement. You know, last year they were very heavily reliant on Owen Morgan uh, pulling off performances at the uh, towards the tail end, they were very reliant on Andre Russell the year before that, uh, and so that's that's a great sign. Um, Dinesh Karthik coming in and doing um, you know Nidahas revisited uh, uh, coming in and hitting that twenty two of nine at the end. But uh, but yeah, I thought the way that uh, Tripathi and, and Rana um, every time the ball was pitched up, Nitish Rana went for it, and you, you saw that the smash Bhuvneshwar would come out for four, uh, hit a couple of uh, um, fours and sixes off first balls of overs as soon as the ball was in his arc over the offside. Uh, Tripathi hitting those straight sixes and fours down on one knee, uh, taking on the spinners, not allowing them to settle. Gill, you know, hit the two boundaries he hit were absolutely beautiful. Um, the, the rest of us, you not know, not so much, but, um, you know, only got four, 15 off, off 13 balls, but, you know, you'll expect him to be better. And it, it does, when the top three are Indian, obviously, and, and firing, A, it, KKR, I think, suffered last year through flexibility is all very well, but they didn't know what the, the base they were building from. They weren't quite sure what the initial plan was around which to be flexible. It was just, oh, you go there, you go there, maybe it'll work. No, that didn't work, you go there. But the fact that this formula has worked first time means, all right, we'll stick with that and change it from a position of strength. And it also means, as you say, overseas flexibility. It means, you know, you could fit Lockie Ferguson into that 11 if you don't want to play Shakib, or you can... Um, you know, if Russell needs a rest, you can bring in, uh, you can bring in Lockie Ferguson, or you can bring in uh, someone else. Yeah, or Ben Cutting, uh, a, a hugely experienced player as well. And so it does give you a huge amount. Of, a little bit like Delhi Capitals with their uh, with their Indian heavy top uh, top order. Um, it, it does give you a huge amount of, uh, of flexibility. And you know, you you certainly expect that Morgan and Andrew Russell will fire at some point uh, this season. So. I think you and I have talked and I've talked in other contexts about Keki, I didn't have too many holes in the squad in terms of the auction uh, that they needed to fill. It was just, they needed better. They needed their, their better players and their, their players to perform better than they did last year on an individual level. And the signs are good from, uh, from that point of view. Yeah. And while commentating during the India England series for Sky, Dinesh Karthik was asked how giving up captaincy is going to affect him. And the first thing he said was, uh, I'm vice captain now, which means I can focus a lot more on my batting. It's something that he struggled to deal with last year when he was captain. He wasn't scoring many runs. Today, obviously, he came in and scored that blistering 22 of nine balls when it looked like KKR's inning was stuttering a bit towards the end. 
So it must be a good sign for KKR that Dinesh Karthik fired in the first game because when he was in form in 2018, KKR were third in the league table and reached the playoffs. I remember, if I remember correctly. So how key is that according to you, Monty and Nakov? Yeah, look, I think Dinesh you know, Karthik's role uh, again is going to be of that. Um, you know, helping um, especially the slightly younger players in the team, you know, um, make sure that they actually, you know, um, bowl one side of the wicket. I think Owen Morgan is big, big on that, you know. He'll set the field and he say, either you bowl leg side or offside. That's where I want the ball to go. And uh, when, he, when Owen Morgan is at its best, he actually, um, it's, it's actually, the, the, you know, the, the, he, he, he sort of divides you know, the, the whole cricket area into sections and, and he wants the ball to go into that particular area. And you can see that, you know, with the way, um, you know, the clarity that he gives, um, especially to the, to the young spinners, but also um, even at the back end, you know, with Andre Russell, you know, he's bowling effectively like a, a left armour, you know, around the wicket, bowling them sort of Yorkers, sixth, seventh stump deep and, and, and the ball is only going in one particular area, deep cover, long, uh, long off, you know, cutting that area down. And I think that is when you know that Owen Morgan is at its best when in his captaincy. He gets the bowlers to bowl on one side of the wicket, but in a particular region as well. And I think that is what the young captains, you know, we have in Delhi Capitals, we've got the, tomorrow we've got Rajasthan Royals playing, you know, someone like these. I will be watching throughout every match of Kolkata. The real, you know, there's always a value. You always think, what are the key values of IPL this year? And it's seeing how Owen Morgan operates and marshals his troops during every match. Yeah, I think you, you've covered it very well. Yeah, I'll come, yeah on to you now, uh, Nako, you, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I, Dinesh, Dinesh Karthik, you know, it, it, you have to be a little bit careful about reading too much into a situation. You know, Dinesh Karthik was captain that season that KKR got to the playoffs and he's just captain Tamil Nadu to another title in the T20, in the Vijay Hazare, sorry, the Saeed Mushtaq Ali Trophy uh, as well. But um, yeah, if Dinesh Karthik is batting with, with freedom, and he knows that, again, talking about Monty clarity of role with the bowlers, it's the same with the batters. Dinesh Karthik knows that his role is as a death overs hitter to come in and go from ball one. And he had a platform from which to do it, even if they had been stuttering a little bit. I thought, actually, that uh, the Sunrisers, um, uh, Nubby and, and Rashid Khan bowled really well in that, uh, that 16, overs, 16 to 19, 30 runs for four wickets, only two boundaries. And it looked as though they were uh, going to, I think in the end, it, probably kept the, the target even vaguely competitive, but it looked as though, um, you know, the, it looked as though KKR were going to get over 200. And then suddenly up until that late over onslaught, it looked as though it was going to be, you know, 160 or so and, or 165 and defendable. But then Dinesh Karthik uh, gave that little bit of impetus in the last, in the last couple of overs. And I think he's got that clarity of role. He isn't trying to do too much as he seemed to be doing uh, last year. Um, and, it, it it is a good sign for uh, for KKR. I mean, the they they do they are a team that have a lot of options in the way they set up their squad, which can be a problem when things aren't going right. But if they are making any changes now, you think they're making them from a position of strength. And you're also you've got Morgan and McCullum having a full year. That, you know, oh, they've had six months to plan this, and they've got the full year to work on their on their um, on their strategies and. Morgan has talked a lot about how McCullum influenced his England team. And they had a long, they had lots of chats with each other when New Zealand came to England after the 2015 World Cup, which was the first proper series of the Morgan Revolution. And it was 430 plays 430, 390 plays 390. And Morgan has taken the McCullum New Zealand bl blueprint and built on it. Uh, and so those two working in tandem uh, together, together is great. And then you've got Obviously, McCullum's had success with Trinbago Knight Riders, and he's got guys like Andre Russell and Sunil Narine, who've been, or Narine rather, at least he was part of that, and Andre Russell, who he's worked with a little bit before as well. I thought Russell being fit to bowl is obviously a massive, uh, a massive plus as well, and I thought he bowled with good pace. Uh, for Sunrisers, Rashid Khan yet again was the standout bowler. Uh, I'll come to you, Monty, first. When all the bowlers from, from Sunrisers are getting hit all over the park, what differentiates? What differentiates Rashid Khan from the rest? Why is he so good and why can't players get him away? 
Well, I think it's, it's, it's the pace. He bowls it really quick and he only needs to get it to turn a little bit at that pace. And he, able, and, and he, and he manages to do that. He's able to disguise his googly really well. And, and most of the time people can't, you know, batsmen can't actually pick, you know, his googly. And, and, and it's very much sort of, you know, um, you know, like, like a, a, a Pakistani sort of, you know, players, you know, Pakistani leg spinners, they seem to, you know, when they bowl their Google, it, it's very subtle, you know, positions of the wrist. It's not quite directly coming out of the back of the hand, which is much more like the Australian way of bowling a Google. And, and, and that's what Rashid Khan has, you know, and it's these subtle variations that allows him to bowl with speed, but, and then just, you know, only needs a slight degree of turn either way, and, and he gets the batsman out. And, and teams are now, they know that, you know, we, we're pretty much, you know, if we can get 25 to 30 runs off, you know, Rashid Khan, that's been good for us. And the next 16 overs is where we really, you know, show, you know make sure that we, we set up the game. And, and, and that's how, you know, people are going to, well, teams are going to be looking at how they have, you know, beaten Sunrisers, which are, are one of the sides which I think, you know, could challenge the playoffs. And, and they would think, well, it's effectively 16 overs. We have 16 overs to get possibly, you know, bat at 10 and over and then just, you know, allow Rashid Khan to bowl his sort of, you know, 25, 30 runs. And, and you know, 180 is, I think, a, a competitive total. And that, that brings in huge risks if another Sunrisers poll that polls really well. Like, for example, if Bhubanesh Kumar will have a lot better days than he had today, um, you, you can maybe... I think even giving up four overs to the opposition is a lot. Giving up eight overs or six overs, it's difficult to recover from that. You're, you're worried about survival. And if you're worried about survival, you've, the bowler's done their job in a sense. Um, and Rashid Khan was magnificent today. I felt really back, well backed up by Mohamed Nubby, who had a poor season last season, but is a, a very experienced uh, cricketer. I mean, he's been playing in 15th or 16th year of, uh, of top-level cricket, or certainly of international. You know, he's been playing international cricket, I think, since about 2004 for Afghanistan. Um, he's been there, done it, seen it all. Um, and uh, is, is a fantastic uh, bowler at his best. You know, he's bowling those, sort of undercutting the ball. If it lands on the seam, it'll spin. If, it's, if it doesn't, it'll skid on. And I thought he was excellent today. And bowled at the death, which I haven't seen Mohamed Nubby do for, uh, for a little while. Um, he can bowl at pretty much any stage of the innings. Whether Nubby fits into the uh, 11 in every game, given that Kane Williamson was left out today, I don't know. But it's a nice option for, uh, for, uh, for the Sunrisers to, to have. Uh, for sure. I mean, the, the, the big worry really for, for the Sunrisers is, uh, um, is David Warner. Um, I, you can't read too much into four balls, but I don't know if you guys agree, but he looked tentative today. Yeah, I think he played on the wrong line twice. He could have been out in the first over when Harbhajan bowled only for Cummins to drop him. And then he got out in a similar fashion playing on the wrong line. I think he looks a bit rusty. He's just recovering from injury. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. SRH have obviously trusted him with the leadership, so expecting him to play all 14 games, of course. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly he can adapt back into playing conditions and if he will be able to have a good season. Well, a few times last year and the year before, um, you know, when he and Bairstow were opening the batting together in 2019, it was usually Bairstow was going a lot quicker than David Warner. Warner I think Warner was the Orange Cap winner that year, but quite slow in a lot of his innings. And uh, a little bit scratchy, and he was during the World Cup a couple of times as well. I think he, um, I think the batters sometimes trying to bat, quote unquote, properly um, can can inhibit them sometimes because you know we all know Warner's destructive capabilities. But I mean, Prashid Krishna, I mean that that delivery that was exactly how Joffrey Archer has been getting David Warner out for the last year. Yeah, I think in 2018 or 19 it was the year when Kane Williamson was captain and he dropped himself to play David Warner instead. So I wouldn't say it's beyond the possibilities if he doesn't score any runs for him to drop himself and then allow Williamson to get uh, him. 2018 was the year that Warner was banned. And Williamson yeah, was... 2019 then. Yeah. Uh, Williamson, I think, was the orange cap winner that year. And he and Bairstow were superb. And uh, you had Rashid Khan and Mohamed Nabi slash Shakib. And that was a really well-balanced lineup. But uh, And then you go Jason Roy, who's a very, very fine opening batter, probably won't get in the team. Uh, for most, for in, in large parts, unless they play on a really quick wicket, and you and you then want to pack the uh, the the batting, um, but it is um, it's a problem. It's a it's a problem of riches, but in the wrong way. Yeah, and uh, lastly, before we move on to the other two games that took place in the past week, uh, I wanted to ask you. Obviously, one game is a very small sample size, but having seen both these teams play today. 
who do you think has a better chance of making the playoffs? Monty, why don't you go first? Well, I think um, with any team, it's it's about finding a group of 11 players that are actually going to win you the team, you know, win you the game. You know, we can talk about individual performances doing well, but, you know, in the end, look, you know, people talked about Harbhajan Singh, only bowled one over. But, you know, he, he also adds value, you know, from other aspects. And in the end, it's about getting the team over the line and finding a group of, you know, four overseas players and the rest of the six players that, that wins you that team. So, look, I think KKR are always going to be challenging, you know, the playoff spot just because of Owen Morgan's captaincy. You know, he, like I said, he is the best T20 captain in the world. And, um, you know, there'll be teams, you know, uh, looking at him, how he marshals the troops, how he, the decisions he makes, you know, during the sort of, you know, critical overs, which over, which bowlers he brings on, um, and also the batting as well. So the whole makeup of Owen Morgan, you know, the leader, the captain, you know, how, how he sort of builds a team, how he gets a group of 11 players is uh, going to be the probably, you know, the, the cricket enthusiasts, as we say, would love to see how Owen Morgan, you know, gets the team over the line. Yeah, uh, so just to end with KKR and Sunrisers, uh, ask you, Nako, simple question, within a minute, tell me, will there be a third star on this badge? The third star might be pushing it. I still don't. I know Mumbai lost the first game, and we'll come on to them, but they still look the strongest team going into the going into the tournament. But I mean, it was so ridiculously close last year, where I think you had six teams separated by three points or four points or something. Um, but KKR, if they can keep up this level of individual performance, I think they will be challenging for that playoff spot. And I think that Sunrisers might have to slightly overperform themselves or their balance will be working slightly against them this year. It's very early days, and I think that um, uh, both, I think both sides have, have huge match winning potential. You know, Rashid Khan and Andre Russell are guys who can win games on their own with bat and with ball. Um, but I think, KK, I think the, sign, the early signs are very good for KKR. I wouldn't necessarily be rushing out to print that third star yet, though. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind, Nako. I'll, I'll wait. But we'll move on to game one of the IPL. Uh, it was India's captain, Virat Kohli, versus India's vice-captain, Rohit Sharma. The IPL broadcast team did not fail to remind us how many IPL trophies Rohit Sharma has won. <laughs> so, obviously, since 2013, they never won an opening game and they carried on that tradition of not winning. I think in the post-match uh, presentation, they asked Rohit Sharma and he said, yeah, we're happy to keep this streak going if it means that we win another IPL. And... I wanted to come to both of you individually. What did we learn from that game? Are Mumbai Indians still favourites? And is it just like the one-off that they have every season, they start slow? Or do you think there are some problems in Mumbai? I, I think I said this as well on some, on some of our previous shows. The only, the only serious, it's not a serious issue exactly, the, the thing that mitigates a little bit against Mumbai is that they're playing their first nine games on slow spinning wickets. And their spin attack is not as strong as others with, you know, Rahul Chahed is a good bowler. Jayant Yadav is a good bowler. Karnal Pandey is a good bowler. But, you know, they're not Rashid Khan. Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not world class, any of them. Um, and, that, um, and that might be an issue at times. They, they've got some very good spin hitters, of course. You've got, you know, you've got Hardik Pandey and Kyron Pollard. You're not, uh, you're not going too far wrong in the, in the middle of it. And it's Sean Kishan as well. Um, I, they lost a few. They lost because at the wrong time, that uh, uh, as well. Um, they, there's a there's a lot more to come from a lot of their their players. They weren't too far off. I think like, the the win on uh, on Friday was a lot more about how well RCB played than it was about uh, how poor Mumbai Indians were. I think Harshal Patel I thought was superb at the death. Not just the you know, not just the wickets, you know, because, uh, you know, one, you know, some of them are slightly freakish, but uh, I thought the way he planned his over was really good. I thought the way that uh, he was used was really good. I thought the way that Virat Kohli got Mohamed Siraj finished and Kyle Jameson finished only having to bowl one over each at the death was very good. Um, I thought the way Dan Christian was used to, to fill in overs was excellent. And, and the way that Harshal Patel mixed up those Yorkers with those slower balls and uh, the, way he, uh, the way he delivered those was excellent. And then, and then with the batting, Maxwell already looks a, um, a great addition, taking some of the pressure off Coley and AB. And De Villiers is ridiculous. 
Yeah, and I wanted to come to you, Nako. Two things. Firstly, Washington Sundar opened. We discussed it in our preview when we spoke about it. Both of you said Washington Sundar would open, but again, like uh, y'all said, it would be at the latter stages of the tournament. Of course, with Particle being out due to COVID, he got that opportunity, didn't take it. So do you reckon, Nako, he'll get an opportunity again this year or that's it? He'll be back down to number seven. And secondly, is A.B. De Villiers human? (laughs) <laughs> the second answer to that is only just. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I don't know what you expect me to say to you about A.B. de Villiers. I mean, the guy is extraordinary. He hasn't he hasn't played, I don't think, since the last IPL, and he comes in and and, and does that. Um, you know, he's one of those guys. He's so it's a little, little bit like Lionel Messi. He's so good, you almost you almost forget to talk about him at times. Um, the way he, the it was the delivery from who was it? Who, it was is it Trent Bolt? I think the basically a Yorker a, a foot outside off stump, which he hits for six. It's unbelievable, or shot. The kind of thing I've only seen Russell do. Yeah, De Villiers can do things that no other batter can do. Um, it was a slight issue that it, it because of that slight collapse. It, it it took AB playing somewhere near his best to get RCB over the line. But I think they've done just about enough. Um, I would like to see a little bit more intent from Virat Kohli, knowing that he's got Maxwell and De Villiers backing him up. Um, I, but on the first question, um, Washington Sundar was trying to hit the ball too hard. He was doing. He was trying to do the right things, but not able to do them. He was trying to attack the power play a little bit, like somebody like Rhythm and Saha did, or like Parthi Patel used to do, which is fine. I have no problem with that. It didn't work, and I think would expect Particle to come back in at the top of the order next game. Yeah, and last question to both of you. Do both these teams make the playoffs? I assume we've all spoken about Mumbai extensively, so I'm assuming that answer for both of you is a yes. So I'll move on to the RCB bit. Do you both think RCB still make the playoffs, or uh, do you think there can be issues for them, having seen that team combination? Yeah, look, I, I think the RCB issue is um, why separate, you know, A.B. de Villiers and Virat Kohli? You know, I think he's got him up the order. I think A.B. de Villiers should be batting close to him. And, and you know, get your best player out there. Well, get him to face as many balls as you can. And A.B. de Villiers is the best player. You know, why would you want to do that? You know, and I think that is something that, you know, Virat Kohli may have to just address and think, OK, you know, we'd re- you know they, they won. Um, because, you know, of under par performance from, you know, Mumbai Indians. And, uh, you know, that's something, you know, even Virat Kohli himself, you know, he, he didn't really, you know, um, you know do so well as, as you expect him to do. Um, so opening, is that the real, you know, the right role for him? Um, I'm not sure, you know. I quite like the combination of, you know, Kohli and A.B. de Villiers together in, in, in that batting partnership, four, five, three, four, you know, that, that seems like a, a better option. Or, you know, two, three, you know, why don't you get A.B. de Villiers, you know, at the top or the other? When they both back together, that's, uh, that's when they, you know, they, they help each other with the intensity of running, the boundary hitting, and, and you know, like Nicole said, you know, some of the spore striking of A.B. de Villiers is, uh, is uh, you know, I think, yeah, I'll agree with him, just about human. Yeah, do you agree with that, Nicole, in terms of the batting order? I think this has been... I actually don't agree with that. And I think the fact that Maxwell is in there, a proven match winner, a, pro, a, a guy who you know and you can trust, can hit the ball to all parts of the ground, can hit boundaries off all types of bowling, doesn't have an obvious weakness. You know, maybe he's a little bit... He can't hit the short ball as well as, uh, as, well as some, but he's still a phenomenal striker. I think that breaking them up a little bit and then kind of extending the life of that batting lineup, as it were. Um, I think I, I, I semi agree with, with Monty in the sense that I, you know, Coley, De Villiers and Maxwell in there or whichever order you want to put them in or probably, um, it would be maybe ideal if they had two high quality openers, but they, they, they don't unless they want to go really overseas heavy with someone like Finn Allen at the top of the order, who's a super exciting player. But then you're light on bowlers, and I don't think they want to do that. Um, with uh, given that they've got already, you know, can't fit Kane Richardson and and so on into the into the team. I think um, I think there are definitely signs of uh, good signs from Kyle Jameson that he's adapted well to 
uh, to his role and that he's, his role is going to be clear in this team in that he's not going to be used as a top and tail death bowler. He's going to bowl uh, kind of mostly through the middle overs as kind of enforcer type, almost like Liam Plunkett has done for England uh, in the run up to the 50 over World Cup and then one over at the death. Mohamed Siraj, I think, looks a completely different bowler in T20. He looked just so much more confident about what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to bowl like a... Uh, like a sort of facsimile of a T20 bowler, he was banging the ball in just back of a length. A little bit like, a little bit like you see. I'm not saying he's as good as Jofra Archer, but he was bowling in the similar vein to Jofra Archer, banging it in back of a length, hitting just above the top of off stump, trying to hit the splice. And he was very difficult to get away. And I thought those two were very good. I would like to find a way to get them, Kane Richardson, into the team. Um, I think both teams can expect more from their wrist spinners. I think Chahel and Chahel will bowl better than they did today. Um, in terms of the answering your question, just as we're wrapping up this, uh, yeah, Mumbai for the playoffs, and I think RCB were in my uh, um, in my four to make the playoffs at the start of the tournament, and I don't see anything that's made me change my mind. Delhi versus CSK. Obviously, Delhi came out on top. Actually, cantered to win. A lot of talking points. Rishabh Pant, the captain, was visibly nervous at the toss, standing next to his idol. We'll start with that. Let's start with that. Seems like a good moment. How big was it for him to make his captaincy debut, so to say, in senior international cricket uh, next to his idol, MS Dhoni? Yeah, look, look. I think you know, for any any sportsman growing up, when you when you see your idol, you you know, you, you're watching him constantly on TV. You you inspire to be like them, and then suddenly you're actually shaking hands and saying, "Well, heads or tails, mate." You know, that's. That must be a, a great moment for Rishabh Pant, you know, going back. And then MS Dhoni, the great man he is, you know, he probably knows that, you know, his, his captaincy, his, his batting isn't to the best of his ability. But how often do you see him after the game just giving time to the players, to the opposition? He did it in the last IPL. He'll probably keep doing it here. But inside, when he goes back and he sits by himself, he's thinking, you know, I want the old MS Dhoni back. You know, the guy who used to just, you know, win games, from impossible situations, be calm under pressure as a, as a captain. Now, these are the qualities which I think we are all missing at the moment from uh, MS, MSD. And uh, we hope to see that, you know. But the great man himself, he's always willing to give time to others. Um, but he doesn't, he doesn't he, you know, you don't, you don't get that impression off him that inside he's probably hurting, that he's thinking, well, you know, as an, we know it's an individual game, you know, and every... As a cricketer myself, you know, every player loves to obviously showcase their own talent. And that's something at the moment has been missing, you know, for, for a while with MSD. So let's, let's hope we see the older Marinda Singh Dhoni that we've seen over the last few years. Uh, there's, I mean, there's such an interesting thing with Arisha Pant, do you remember? He, in Australia came to India in 2019 for a one-day international series. MS Dhoni took the last three games of that tournament off. So Risha Pant came in. His first game was in Ranchi and he made a mistake and the crowd in Ranchi, MS Dhoni's hometown, were chanting Dhoni's name at Risha Pant, his own fans mocking him. It's amazing how far he's come in those... Well, I mean, A, it's ridiculous that that was happening and B, it's incredible how far he's come in two years. He's now... Um, you know, if there was any doubt, and in my mind there shouldn't have been, um, about what Risha Pant is, is and what he could be for, uh, and what he can be for India and every team he plays for, um, he's well and truly silenced that. And, and yeah, it was, it was nice to see Risha Pant kind of allowing himself to, to feel how he was feeling in that moment. Uh, but I, I wrote a piece for Guerrilla Cricket before the start of the tournament. I'm a fan of this move to have Risha Pant captaining in Shreyas Ayer's absence. I think it, it's a good sign for him and it's a good sign for Delhi. Uh, one, Risha Pant has captained before. He captained Delhi through a, I think he captained Delhi through a Ranji Trophy season when he was 20. Uh, captain yeah, 2017, so that he must have been 19 at the time. Yeah, sorry, he was 19, and then and then the Vijay Hazare just after his 20th birthday, and he got them to a final at 19, captaining guys like Gautam Kambir and Ishant Sharma. Um, you know, and he's and he's in the form of his life, uh, and he's completely secure in his own game. He's secure and improving his game. It's the perfect time. And for Delhi, Delhi do well when they're aggressive, when they try and when they attack teams with bat and ball, rather than trying to be canny or trying to think their way through games in that sense not that they're not thinking but they're trying they, they, they have to try and turn every game into as high a scoring and as aggressive and as fast a game as they can be um you know if you think of them in sort of again loose football analogies but liverpool or borussia dortmund um they're not the kind of game team to invite teams onto them and then counter-attack they want to hit hard and hit hard and go 
and that's what Risha Punt brings. And I think it, it sends a good sign uh, for them that they went with him rather than, say, Ajinkya Rahane or Stephen Smith. Um, or uh, Ashwin to a lesser extent because he's such a, a thinking bowler, slightly overthinking at times, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll come to that, I'm sure. Um, I, uh, our Ashwin turning into Kedar Jadav was quite fun uh, at one point during the, during this game. Uh, but yeah, I, I liked what Risha... Yeah, the, the captain underground. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I like what Risha Pant uh, brings, to, brings as a captain and I like what it says. Um, and this was a completely different... The, we've seen already that the one could eight, as though we didn't know, the Wankade is a completely different service to the Chepok service. Um, and so much so that 188 is par, no more than par, really, against a good, a good batting lineup uh, for, um, for, that uh, CSK um, put on. Um, and, and, you know, coming on, Monty mentioned uh, Prithvi Shaw earlier. Um, Prithvi Shaw, we know, has done a lot of work with Praveen Amre, the uh, a former Indian batting coach and now batting coach at Delhi. Um, I'm not always a massive fan of of massively analyzing techniques, certainly not in the way that some commentators do. And Sunil Garvasco, very much in the Bombay batting school, was talking about it in from a very uh, kind of boilerplate technical terms. But but I liked this bit of analysis that his hands are very close to his body, so the back lift is going the toe is going up towards point, as a lot of batters do. But he's in fu- he's in full control over the bat swing and over the speed, and he's got such a He's got such a clean swing when it's working properly. And the, and the way, the amount of control he appears to have over the bat face and coming off, let's be honest, one of the all-time great list day domestic seasons that he's just pulled off for, for Mumbai. And he and Shikhar Dhawan reduced a quite good CSK bowling attack to rubble. Yeah, I think um, just coming back slightly to Rishabhan quickly, I think the two ways to get into the Indian side when you're a young boy it's either you're replacing a legend and you're always getting compared to that person, which is quite difficult to get out of those shadows. And I think Richard Punt, for him to get out of those shadows initially was quite difficult, which we saw in his performances. He was trying to play like someone he's not. And now he's finally got into his own. He's been given that space to be himself. He's no more being compared to MS Dhoni as much as he was right at the start when MS Dhoni was giving up the gloves. So I think that's helped him. But the second way of coming into Indian team is... He's the next big thing. He's the next Sachin Tendulkar. And that's exactly what happened with Prithvi Shaw. People forget that he's nine, he was 19 when he came into that Indian side. So obviously, there'll be flaws. He doesn't know his game as well as a 25, 26-year-old would because he's not played senior cricket for that long. So, I mean, obviously, he started off really strong. He's fixed his technique, like Sunil Gavaskar mentioned on commentary. And do you think that's a great sign for him? to bounce back as strongly as he has after being dropped, especially with the great Vijay Hazare he's had as well. Monty, you can go first and then Nako. Yeah, look, you know, when, when, when Delhi Capitals, you know, were playing and, you know, all eyes are on, obviously, um, you know, the team itself and the makeup of the side. But I think it's that, like, you know, Nico obviously mentioned, we'll talk about Richard Bunt in a minute, but how Nico mentioned about... You know, they're aggressive in their bowling and in their batting. And that comes stems from Ricky Ponting. You know, Ricky Ponting has really come, you know, has grown. Um, he's already was a good coach, but he's kind of found his feet where he thinks, yeah, this is a style of leadership I need. I need an assistant who's slightly more introverted, sits in the background like Mohammed Cave, got his note, 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 notepad out, always writing the, you know, the notes, more of an observer as a coach rather than, you know, I'm very proactive, you know, hands-on, which, you know, Ricky Ponting is. That works so well and it brings the best out of him. And also, Ricky Ponting enjoys the challenge, you know. It must give him immense satisfaction, thinking that last year, Prithvi Shaw wasn't doing so great. He's come back. He's, he's, he's adding to his confidence, his, his aggressiveness, once his mindset is really clear. And, you know, Gavaskar mentioned about the coaching side of things. And I think, you know, we mentioned the flow, but what we saw particularly that was, you know, missing from his game last year was that back elbow, that back elbow tucks in as he plays the shots. You know, every time he's being aggressive, you can see wherever he wants to hit the ball. Because what that back elbow does, it gets you to play the ball late, but also allows you the control of that same ball, you know, pitch, let's say, outside of stump, you can hit it, you know, where you want, leg side and off side because you're playing slow, so late and allowing that to, you know, the, the shape of your, uh, of your sort of position to hit the ball out of the ground or, or, or even a single. You have that two options and that's what it allows you to do to hold that shape to, you know, hit the ball 
as you wish. And, and it's great to see, you know, pretty sure, you know, humble beginnings, you know, his background's very simple. You know, he's, he's come from very sort of humble beginnings. And they're the sort of players I tend to, you know, sort of, you know, cheer on a bit more. You know, when I'm, when I'm watching these sort of games, I'm thinking, you know, he's come from a, he's not, he's not, a, you know, not from a wealthy background and, and he's doing extremely well. You know, I really have, I really hope, you know, he has a, a, he has a fantastic IPL and, and gets, gets back, you know, in, into the international reckoning in some form, shape or form. Uh, you would you would think that you know within sort of four or five years, I don't know, depending on how long Rohit Sharma goes on for, maybe, but um, you know Shubman Gill and, and Prithvi Shaw will be India's Test openers for for a few years, and and you know that's phenomenally exciting, uh, really, from a, a just for as a fan of uh, as a fan of quality cricket and of beautiful looking batters, um, and and. In, as also as well as um, you know, Monty talked about being able to keep that shape longer. I think that's something Risha Pant has added as well. Risha Pant always had the power, and he always had the the hand speed. But um, he would often hit sixes, kind of in spite of himself, where he'd be, excuse me, he'd be, he'd be losing his base, or he'd be um, he'd be almost decelerating through the stroke. But now um, he's got that ability now to delay his stroke a little bit. It's almost like a sort of you almost think of it as tick tick boom he sort of delays the whole bat swing and he's accelerating through the ball and adding that little bit of extra power which means that whether he's hitting offside whether he's hitting leg side whether he's hitting straight if he's coming down the ground if he's coming off the back foot he's got such control over the over the bat swing both of them do now um or uh Richard Punt has added to it and Prithvi Shaw has refound it and it, it makes you so hard to bowl to because um it, it takes out some of those obvious weaknesses, and it means that that Prithvi Shaw, at times uh, when things were going badly wrong, was really uh, was sort of f- throwing his hand through the ball, but not in the not in a um, decisive and not in a uh, in a very committed way. He was uh, he was sort of re- he was defaulting to a slightly sort of desperate um, approach, where he was it looked as though he was trying to hit the ball too hard, and he was losing his shape, and he was actually losing power through trying to hit the ball too hard, and and those little technical adjustments and those little uh, those little that bit of work and the confidence of having it work and having it score runs for him uh, has um has you know it's reversed some of the damage he had done to himself and you know monty mentioned his background it's also worth pointing out this guy's been tipped as the next big thing since he was what 12 uh, he, he got a scholarship over to play schools cricket in england when he was 12 i think and playing first team schools cricket in england when he was 12 years old and tiny um, you know, hailed as the next big thing in Mumbai cricket, which is, you know, the most batting obsessed city in the world at 14, making his India, making his professional debut at 17 or whatever it was. And all these comparisons to, uh, to Tendulkar and to Kambli and to Garvaskar. And uh, it's all, and, and then from that, and then being seen as your, but, by your family as the ticket out as the as the as the way out i mean that's a lot to deal with and it's something that all indian cricketers from uh from these poorer backgrounds who make it have to deal with uh and it's pretty sure kind of got turned into a meme at 20 um it, which is which is i think some indication to a little bit of warning for, for fans a little bit just to back off a little bit in those in terms of how in terms of those those judgments and credit to him for wanting to do that work as well um, it's not always easy when you've, you know, when you've had it or when you're really, d- when you're really down to take advice and to recognize that this guy can help me. This guy isn't trying to put, tear me down. He's trying to help me. And, and that's exactly what's happened. Um, uh, moving, moving on to the, the bowling, I thought that the way they dealt with the absence of Rabada, Nokia and Uksher, who would, have, who would walk into their first choice 11 was quite interesting. Um, I think the, the, I've, I've liked Avesh Khan since I first saw him in the IPL a few years ago. Very aggressive, hits the pitch hard, bowl, tries to bowl quick, can bowl at almost any stage of the innings. Um, I thought he, he was excellent. Um, uh, Amit Mishra was, was nice and tidy. Chris Wokes, I think, was really underused. Uh, I mean, it was, um, I think that the only mistake I think that Richard Punt made was giving Curran that extra over ahead of Chris Wokes. But uh, there's a lot to like from uh, from. Delhi, and I think they've, um, you know, Monty and I have both talked about it, but they've gone back to what makes them really good in that, in terms of trying to blow teams away. Yeah, and I wanted to come from obviously the cricketers we just spoke in to someone who's trying to maybe get back into the Indian T20 squad just before the World Cup. It's R. Ashwin. 
because obviously Indian spinners have been struggling and there has been some clamor in the media and social media about R. Ashwin coming back. But is it surely? Yeah, there's been clamor and I would love to see him back because obviously we've been struggling with that second spinner. I think Rahul Chahar is too inexperienced to go direct into the World Cup as a starting spinner. So it'd be great to have an R. Ashwin at least in the squad. So from his perspective, obviously, this IPL is huge because I'm sure he himself will know that there is an opportunity to get back in that squad if he does well. So what? How were you guys impressed with what you saw of Arashwin in the first game? Or do you think he can do a lot more to contribute to the Delhi side going forward? I'll let the world-class spinner take this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look, look, I think, I think with Arashwin, yeah, uh, Eyes are always going to be, you know, on him because, you know, there there is that gap in the T20, you know, India team right now. They're thinking who are best spinners right now, and they don't really know their best spinners. So if our, if Ashwin, you know, Jadeja get back to their form, you know, it it could, you know, you shouldn't count out this possibility of actually both of them being their frontline spinners in the T20 World Cup. Um, that that could be very much, you know, the the, the case if they if they bowl very well. But it's so much, you know. Young spinners coming through, you know, you, you, every team has a spinner that, that you know, bowls with variation, bowls, you know, got legs, you know, fantastic leg spinners coming through from most teams. So um, that's, I think, you know, they would want, you know, obviously one of the leg spinners in the IPL, Indian leg spinner, to actually perform and do well. Because I think Virat Kohli likes the option of, of, of having a bowler who can actually, you know, turn the ball both ways. Um, and, and if Ashwin can actually, you know, have a great season, you know, by all means, you know, once if you perform well, then yeah, you you know, you're always uh, going to be uh, um, up for selection, and 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 you know, it'd be great to see, you know, veterans. I'm a veteran myself. Nice to see you know veterans perform. And moving on to Chennai now, uh, Shardul Thakur coming off the back of a great six months was doing well, had momentum by his side. Actually, I thought he's going to be one of the contenders for Purple Cap. Did, he got wickets in the end, but he didn't start off too well. Nakul, were you surprised considering how well Shardul's done over the last six months? Or do you think it's just the Mumbai pitch it wasn't suited to his style of bowling? I mean, it should be in theory. I mean, Shardul is from Maharashtra. and He knows the, he knows the pitch quite well. Um, I think he ran into two players in red-hot form, which can happen. Um, his his cutters weren't quite gripping the pitch as they can do, um, which which is a little bit of natural variation. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Even on a even on a pitch like the Wanko Day, um, I, I think that uh, I don't see there's too many issues with the Chennai bowling. To be honest, um, there are a few bad days and running into Prithvi Shaw and Shikhar Dhawan uh, in red hot form, um, chasing down a chasing down a total as well in their, well within their graph. I think it all came together to to produce a a, a bad day. Um, Shardul Thakur has never been an economical bowler. He isn't the kind of bowler you go to for bowling at six sevens and over. Um, he's a wicket taker, uh, and that that's that's how he should be used, and that's how he is used primarily uh, for uh, for Delhi. Uh, sorry, for Delhi for for Chennai, and how he's been used for uh, for India as a partnership breaker, as someone who is a uh, a bowler who's always looking for wickets rather than someone who's going to bowl sort of. Uh, lines and lengths, and 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 try and be uh, try and be an econ- economical bowler. And, th- and knowing those roles is important. But um, you'll have bad days. Ashwin had a bad day. Um, he he did get taken taken down by uh, by or, again Rhino and Moinelli, both very good players of spin, uh, very good hitters of spin. And it was great, by the way, to see Suresh Rhino uh, back in uh, back in hitting form. It looks like he's not been away. And you know, all of us who were talking about Rhino being a massively important part of the CSK team back in the lineup were were proved. Uh, were proved more correct than I think we thought we might be. And it was lovely to see mine uh, used properly and used in that middle order uh, rather than trying to come in towards the, towards the tail end. Uh, I think for, for Chennai, from a batting point of view, I think they are slightly wasting Sam Curran. Um, yeah, I was going to come to that, actually. Point. That was a two-part question I had for both of you. Was one... How good was it to see Moin Ali batting up the order at three, which you kind of dived into a little bit? And second was, is Sam Curran being underused where he's batting at the moment? And how can they fit him into that top order? Do they take Faf out and play Lungi and Giri as one of the fast bowlers and then move Sam Curran up the top? Or is that just not an option for them? I think that's absolutely an option. Um, you could leave. I'm not wholly convinced by Rutheraj Gekwad. Not that he's not a good player, but he doesn't open for Tamil Nadu. He bats at three or four. Uh, 
uh, or certainly did this season uh, as they got to the final. Uh, Faf, I think, has got enough credit in the bank that he should be persev- persevered, but I'd like to see Sam Curran opening. I'd like to see him use his destructive capabilities at the top of the order and get Chennai off to a start, at least get some runs on the board. Uh, it's very difficult to make up for a slow start, but at least if you start quickly and you tail off, like we saw with KKR today, or, um, or like we saw with, um, with Mumbai to a slightly lesser extent, if you start well, at least you've got some runs on the board and you've got something to build from. It's very difficult to, uh, this keep wickets in hand and explode later is, it's quite risky um, in, in, in some ways. It's like, you know, it's the, it's the inverse. Right? In a test match, start it, trying to start and hit the ball hard from ball one doesn't always work because it exposes you to risk. I think starting slowly and exposing and trying to lay it all on the l- lower and middle order exposes you to risk. I would like to see Sam Curran opening. Uh, for for the rest of the for at least a large part of the rest of the tournament, uh, and certainly I think Lungi and Gidi will make a difference to the bowling line. As might Jason Berendorf, who's replaced Josh Hazelwood, and I think that in in limited overs terms is an upgrade. Yeah, Monty, are you in agreement with those changes? Do you think Sam Curran needs to be opening the batting to get the best out of him? Well, it's an option, you know. It's an option when you have you know you know fantastic all rounders in, in in the team. Or in Ali, you know, I think up the order. Is definitely a position for him, um, and 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 I think you know they probably may may look at you know possibly bring in yeah one of one of the seamers who are slightly taller you know Nundungi and Benarov because uh, you know that, I think that that just breaks up the sort of you know the bowling options you know um, once I think you know you can see with any Capitals both Sam Curran Tucker similar height similar release points yeah there may be you know left and right arm but. Once you're set, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty easy, you know, to just to line them up. Um, but if you have people in, in difference in height, then, yeah, batsmen are always adjusting. And that's something maybe, you know, MS Dini has to consider. Um, I think if both Mona Ali and Sam Curran are playing, then you need one of them to, to perform with the ball as well. You know, I know we had a couple of drop catches from, you know, Mona Ali would have been a different story. Um, but I think both of them playing when you when you when you want to win you know and, and the team is winning their roles you know they, they've got to be certain roles that you know this is what this is what you're there for you know and in my opinion i think it's a bonus for any runs we get off sam current at the back end but for his bowling you know i think he's a bit more dangerous than possibly mo and ali maybe you know the second half of the tournament when the wickets get a bit slower and and they get a bit more tired Monali will probably, you know, be more of a useful asset with his bowling. And, and the concern is, you know, they've got five games there. And, and you know, they, uh, you can see MSD thinking, gosh, I need to pick a group of 11 individuals that can win me a game of cricket, not just individual performances, and then think, well, we didn't really get over the line. Yeah, that, that balance issue is important. And, about, and I think that role-based, that idea of everybody knowing their roles and having that clear idea of what, like, and you, had, you know, you had to be a little bit flexible if somebody has a bad day and, and whatever, and you don't want to give it the game away to the opposition as well, because you know, as much as you have a plan, the opposition also knows you have a plan. But you do have, to, you can't go into it completely cold either. I think the one, the other overseas player, DJ Bravo, had a decent day, but the game was kind of done by the time he came on, and he's batting too low to make a difference. DJ Bravo's taking more T Twenty wickets than anyone. You know, if you want, phenomenally experienced, has been a remarkably good T Twenty player. But I think with the needs of this team, I'm not sure that I would have DJ Bravo in my first choice 11. Um, I think that one of Ngidi or Berendorf, Ngidi's made a massive difference to CSK when he's been available. Once you talked about that height, Ngidi's six foot four, Berendorf is six foot six and a left armor, but was very well in the power play. Those excellent Yorkers can swing the ball. Ngidi's very dangerous at the top and tail and has a very good slower ball now. Uh, those off cutters, which uh, with that change of height, um, and someone else who I think could be very useful certainly later in the tournament, Mitchell Santner is a really good cricketer. Um, so clever with the way he bowls, can bowl at any stage of the innings, can hit the ball a very long way. So that's an option for later in the tournament, maybe when they start playing on sp- more spin-friendly wickets. But I think there's there's three uh, three players, not in terms of how good they are, but in terms of the balance. Rutheraj Gaikwad, Ambati Raidu, who and DJ Bravo, I think their positions are vulnerable just from a team balance point of view. Um, but I think it, it's little tweaks, I think, and little tweaks to the balance uh, and getting players in, into the positions where they think you think they can perform. Um, 
for, for Chennai Super Kings. The issue last year was the batting and the lack of intent. There was no lack of intent today with, uh, on, sorry, on uh, Saturday with the batting yesterday. And that's a massive plus. The bowlers will have better days. Yeah, and obviously, lastly, having seen what we have, I know we've just spoken about making those slight changes to the team combination to make that balance a bit better for Chennai. Uh, we, I assume both of you agree with me when I say Delhi will make the playoffs because of the, how strong the team is. Uh, I don't see any major weakness in this side when Ishan Sharma and Umesh Yadav don't even make your 11 and Ramada and Nortia and Akshar Patel are still missing and you canter to a victory. So I think Delhi should be fine to make the playoffs. But with Chennai, with, with what we saw, it's still not getting that right balance yet. Can they miss the playoff for a second year in a row after making it for every season over the last 12 years? Well, I guess, you know, very much, you know, depends on MS Tony, you know, coming back to his form, you know, that's going to be crucial. If you can find that form, somehow we see MS Tony like, like we, we've known him of the way he plays, you know, and the performances that he puts in. Um, I think that is going to be a huge sort of, you know, relief for the team because I think I'm sure everyone else probably, you know, respect the idol, respect the man, you know, his greatness, but they're probably sitting back and thinking, gosh, you know, this is not the MSD that we know, you know, he's not, and Stephen Fleming had a huge concern. He's probably thinking, I hope he hasn't, you know, it's only first game, but again, you know, I remember you saying, Viraj, that uh, sometimes when the coach sort of feels a little bit down after the first game, do you think, you know, um, he, he's sort of having doubts? And, and it's too early to tell, but I think the sooner we see Dhoni get back to form, I think the whole of the camp will be just relieved to think, yeah, they, they, they will start believing that we can actually make it to the playoffs. Chennai are in the in a position now where they're scrapping and they're in the bubble to make the playoffs. They're kind of on the, when I say on the bubble, they're in that sort of gap. There's a lot of teams. I think it's going to be very tight again between fourth and sixth and seventh. Again, it's going to come down to one or two games, maybe net run rate a little bit. Um, I um, Monty said that any runs from Sam Curran for a bonus. I'm not actually sure I agree with that because of how good a hitter he is. I kind of think any runs from MS Dhoni this season, in a meaningful context, are a bonus. Because of, the, because of the amount of other power hitters that they got, well, not power hitters, but guys who can bat aggressively and clear the boundaries, any other runs from MS Dhoni are a bonus. I think it's a good sign that he, you know, him getting up and off two and getting up trying to hit a boundary is a lot better than him being, you know, eight off 14 balls and trying to nudge the ball around. Uh, there are, that is a better way to fail in T20 cricket. I, I, almost, I very rarely criticize players for getting out trying to hit a boundary in T20 cricket. It's absolutely, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, I think any runs from Dhoni this year are a bonus. Um, there's a lot of upside from where CSK are now, and they weren't awful in this first game. I know the, the bowling figures make, might, um, might make it look as though they were. They weren't, particularly. Um, there, there's a lot more to like with the batting, um, and I think the bowling um, can only get better from, from what we know these guys can produce, the likes of Deepak Chahar and Shadul Thakur and, and Ravindra Jadeja and Sam Curran. Uh, and, and, and then you've got Ngidi or, and or Berendorf or Santner. Imran Tahir, who we've not even talked about, was the leading wicket taker in the tournament two years ago. Um, and, excuse me, certainly when, you get to, uh, certainly when you get to slower pitches, I mean, uh, Imran Tahir is a massive asset to you. Um, and we talked about Harbhajan in the, when we were talking about KKR. Um, they don't come much more experienced in T20 cricket than Imran Tahir. here. Um, but um, I think there, there is, I think there are all, even though they lost, I think there are signs of improvement and signs of encouragement on last year. It doesn't look as rudderless as it did last year. But I don't know if MS Dhoni is the key. I think any runs you get from him are a bonus. But there are a little bit, there are little tweaks here and there they need to make sure that they're not, uh, that they're not really scrapping later in the tournament to make it into the playoffs. Yeah, I think we've covered everything with those six teams now that have played so far. Thank you both for joining me for this IPL Weekend Review. We'll be back every, every Monday on your screens to bring you the action from the past week. Now we know with the IPL that one week can change so much. So when we sat here next Sunday, who knows if Chennai will be the next big thing in the IPL. So thank you both for joining me and I will see you guys next week.